Central Congregational Church family on uh, this beautiful Sunday morning, uh, Sunday the 22nd of November. Uh, this Sunday in our the tradition of our church and also the tradition of a lot of other congregational churches around the country is called Founders Day. Um, it's always the Sunday before Thanksgiving where we remember and give thanks for those, uh, the folks that founded uh, this expression of the body of Christ. And uh, you see some of their names on the stained glass windows uh, when you walk around uh, in our sanctuary. And um, it's a bittersweet day. We're glad to be here with you. Uh, but man, we are going to miss being together for the service and our annual Founders Day dinner that takes place in our downstairs dining room. Right. Um, have, you, have you created a giant dinner for us to eat together today? <laughs> are we going to have pre-Thanksgiving or anything like that? No. No, that's not going to happen. But, um, but we, are gonna, we do miss all of you. But uh, you know what? We're, uh, it's, it's, an, it's especially important in this time for us to be thankful um, that we are, uh, that, that we are the, the children of the Lord, that he is with us and he is holding us together. So let's just enter into the spirit of the grace and the goodness of God as we reflect on those who have gone before us. Um, I want to say thank you to Joan for her beautiful prelude kicking us off uh, each week or most weeks. Um, she just does such a wonderful job. We're, we're grateful for her. And um, we just have one birthday this week, um, and uh, it's a very special one uh, to us. Uh, Tasha Meredith uh, has a birthday this week on Thanksgiving Day. And Tasha, we want to say how thankful we are for you and for your family. Uh, I'm personally grateful for the privilege of working with you here at the church on a daily basis. Uh, you're just a wonderful young lady. You're a great mom and um, just doing a great job in your family and you're doing a great job in the way you serve our church congregation. So uh, we together want to wish you a very, very happy birthday and we hope that you get to celebrate, uh, uh, you know, that you get to celebrate your birthday as well as Thanksgiving and uh, have a great day at that. Um, just a few announcements uh, as we keep going here. Uh, the uh, couple of opportunities we have to reach out into our community uh, in partnership with the Croc Center, the Salvation Army Croc Center. Uh, Angel Tree is one of those. You should have received an email from Kelly McGew about how you could uh, get some angels, the little tags, and buy some gifts for children that will eventually be distributed through the Salvation Army Croc Center Toy and Joy Center, where parents that just don't have the means right now can come and go shopping for their children. Um, so if you, uh, you, you should already be aware of this, but if you're not and you want to participate, please reach out to the church office and we'll get you connected. You can email Tasha at Tasha at cccLamesa.com and we'll uh, get that information to you. And on that same note, uh, we still need a few people to sign up to serve at the Toy and Joy Shop on uh, Friday, December 18th mm -hmm. uh, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, where we will help help the families and help distribute the gifts. Uh, it will be done safely with masks and distance and all of those kind of things. Um, and we've already got a few volunteers, but we could use a couple more. Uh, we've made a commitment to have five people um, from our church uh, volunteer there. So if you'd like to do that again, reach out to the church office, and we'd love to sign you up for that. And hopefully this week you have already received your copy of the uh, special holiday newsletter. Um, and if you haven't, please reach out to Tasha at the church office and she will either email that to you or if you'd prefer a hard copy, she would be glad to put one in the mail to you. And man, I'm going to cry again. You're gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't had church now unless Rhonda's cried. No, go ahead. Uh, COVID has just kind of wrecked me, but um, what a meaningful publication and yeah. such an encouragement to read the stories um, of our, our members of our church uh, family that have shared and the, the grace and gratitude um, that we have uh, experienced here mm -hmm. at CCC. So please take time to read that and I hope that um, your heart will be touched as mine is. Absolutely. And, and then the other item is that we have the ongoing food drive to support the La Mesa Spring Valley families within the La Mesa Spring Valley School District. And um, I know that during the um, uh, upcoming holidays like Thanksgiving week um, and the Christmas break that will be coming. They'll be out of school for um, two weeks at Christmas, um, that there will not be food distributed through the school district. Mm -hmm. And so some of those families are going to be impacted by that and needing extra help and support. 
And so um, the food bank at uh, Spring Valley Academy um, is a resource for them. And so we have been, uh, because of your generosity, able to keep uh, helping them with supplies. And we want to keep doing that as long as they're open and um, supporting these families. So if you'd like to participate in that, uh, there are regular office hours that you can uh, drop food off, non-perishable types of food. And um, uh, if you those hours don't work for you, you can reach out to the office and they can make an arrangement for you to um, drop it off or if need be, Scott and I to pick it up from you. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, just a couple more announcements. Uh, again, wanna just remind you of the other ways we can connect virtually throughout the week. Um, Every Tuesday, uh, when I don't forget and when the technology doesn't get in the way, I'm trying to do every Tuesday at 10.30, uh, 10.30 in the morning, uh, quarantine encouragement that you can uh, log into YouTube and watch. Um, and then also we have our Sunday morning Bible study Zoom at 9.45 each Sunday morning and our Wednesday evening uh, Bible, it's really more devotional Bible reading and prayer, and that's been going really well. Would encourage you to try to connect to any or all of those that you're able to. Again, if the technology is a little intimidating to you, it's really not that hard, and we'd love to help you get connected if you want to. So don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Um, thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Um, we, uh, we're just going a week at a time here, and to be honest, we really do need your continued financial support to carry on the ministries uh, in and through this church. The, the uh, information to give is there on your screen. Uh, as together, we uh, do our part to support uh, the ongoing work of, or really the ongoing work of the Lord, uh, what he's doing in this place and through this place in our community and around the world even. so, And I want to share just a brief story, real, uh, a brief real fast, I guess that's <laughs> redundant, a brief story about how your giving makes a difference. Um, a few weeks ago, we hosted the uh, San Diego Blood Bank uh, vehicle out in front of the church on Lemon Avenue. And uh, people, that, they didn't come into the to the church to give blood, but they, we just toasted the front of our church for them. But we had to have somebody here in case the uh, people running the blood bank needed to come in and use the restroom or whatever. And so uh, I was took a shift of just sort of being on site. And while I was here, a 70-year-old African-American woman, homeless woman, showed up at the church. And to be perfectly honest, when she came to the gate, I was in the middle of doing stuff and I was like, oh man, I don't have time for this. Um, just my typical compassion itself. And, uh, <laughs> But um, I ended up letting her in the gate and let her sit down on the benches outside and got to hear her story a little bit. 70-year-old grandma that had been living on a park bench by the La Mesa Library for the last three weeks, and she just said, I can't do this anymore. It's too cold, and do you know of anywhere I can get some help? And I got her story. Anyway, I said, we as a church don't have the means, but we support the San Diego Rescue Mission. And your regular giving, one of the things it supports is not just... Uh, the ministers and the ministries that happen here but in our community and the San Diego Rescue Mission is one of those and I was able to call the rescue mission get the information I needed uh, for their uh, their shelter for specifically for women and children mm -hmm. I was able to talk to this woman and uh, she she knows how to use the trolley I was able to get her the information she was able to take the trolley and to go down there, and I got a message the next day from her. She was so excited. She got into the shelter, and they were already working on getting her permanent housing. And I just, it was a, I think it's important to take the time to tell those stories that your faithfulness in giving is making a difference. And um, so thank you for that, and let's just keep doing it together as much as God enables us. Yeah, and I've heard that story, and it's still, man... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's yeah. important, and it, it's important, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to meet Angie again. I think that was her, her first name. So, um, and then finally, if this is the first time you're watching one of our videos, uh, take a moment to click the bell icon there, subscribe to the channel, and that way, whenever we do a Sunday video or a quarantine encouragement, you'll get a little notification, and you can uh, keep walking this journey uh, with us. And uh, so now, Rhonda, why don't you lead us into the call to worship, and we'll yeah. carry on. Well, let's uh, enter into uh, praise and worship this morning, and um, yeah, kind of a wreck already. <laughs> um, uh, the call to worship this morning is going to be taken from Psalm chapter 63, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you 
in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God, we just want to praise you this morning. I'm just thankful for this opportunity that we have to gather together um, as the body of Christ, God. And even though it's virtually, um, I just know that our hearts are connected because of you, God, and that you are with us um, as we are individually in our homes. Um, your presence is with us collectively, and we can worship you in um, togetherness, God. Yes. And I'm just so grateful for that. And I want to proclaim your name today. May you be glorified in our praise and our worship. May our words and our actions honor you. And as we do that, God, may our hearts be encouraged today. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your love and your kindness towards us and your great work among, among us. Yes. We just love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rhonda. Well, we're going to enter into a time of worship. We're going to start with a hymn. And on this uh, Founders Day, Thanksgiving Sunday, uh, we're going to sing uh, number 98, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And um, I, I've been having a lot of fun, to be honest, just singing these hymns with Joan and this beautiful thousand pipe pipe <laughs> organ. Um, I don't know how well that comes through in your house, but I would just encourage you to hopefully you got the words and you can enter in with the hymn and in the worship choruses uh, after that. So let's worship together. <laughs> i 
Father, today is the day, Lord, and we just thank you for everything you've given to us. Lord, we don't deserve 99.9% of it, and yet we come to you this Sunday and thank you. We love you. We sing to you this morning, and we give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Sing.
Sing with us. Sing holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, now early in the morning our song shall rise to thee.
to uh, Joan and to Steve and the worship team, um, uh, Dave and Kara this week, and it was great to have Pastor Steve Babbitt back with us on the bass, um, and uh, Greg Darling behind the camera. Um, man, it's just, we are, if you're watching this, all of you guys, we w- I want to say on behalf of the whole congregation how incredibly grateful we are for your willingness to be here and do this every week and help, really help carry us through this time as a congregation. So God bless you all. Uh, Before we look into the word this morning on this Founders Day, uh, let's take a moment in silent prayer uh, just to prepare our hearts to receive from the Lord and to uh, lift up uh, our concerns and our needs to him Uh, and uh, being encouraged that the Bible says God obviously knows our needs even before we ask and I just want to remind us again that we're not reminding God of anything he doesn't know or telling him anything he doesn't know. Uh, When we bring our needs to the Lord, it's a way of unburdening ourselves. It's a way of saying, God, I can't carry this on my own. I can't figure this out. I don't have the answer, but I know you can and you do. So, um, And as we do that, obviously we want to keep praying uh, for uh, our country in particular and the world in general in regard to the pandemic. Uh, and it's just so unfortunate that in the United States of America right now, it just seems to be completely out of control. And I would just urge us to do our part to try to do what we can to Make sure that we're not being a part of that uh, spreading process. I know we don't have complete control in that, but we have some. So let's try to be good neighbors uh, and love our neighbors as ourselves in that way, as Jesus has taught us. And then also just praying in regard to the political situation. And I won't get into the details of that, but I would just encourage us as Christ followers who believe that more way beyond any political party or country or earthly leader, we have pledged our allegiance to Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, the, uh, the living Savior, and the true King, and the coming King. Let's seek Him, and let's pray, uh, let's worship Him, and let's uh, cry out to Him on behalf of ourselves, our country, and our world. So let's take a few minute, moments and pray together. Well, Father, uh, in this quiet moment, uh, we truly are uh, grateful for your great love and faithfulness. Lord, on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, we want to be careful and we want to joyfully just express our thanks and our gratitude for all that you are and all that you've done for us. And specifically, Lord Jesus, for your life, your death your sacrifice and your resurrected life and the gift of your Holy Spirit that through all that you've accomplished, you have redeemed us. You have bought us back from slavery to sin. Um, you, have, uh, you have brought us back into, recon- you've reconciled us back into relationship with our Father, our Heavenly Father. You've given us your Holy Spirit. Uh, you've given us hope for this life and life to come and you've given us purpose for this life and the life to come. And we just wanna say thank you for all of that. And we want to say thank you that you know about and you care about the needs of our world and of our lives in particular. There's nothing too great for you and there's no detail too insignificant. And so we just want to lift our hearts and our cares and our concerns to you. And Lord, especially at this time, we would just continue to cry out for mercy in regard uh, to this COVID-19 pandemic, Lord, that is affecting us greatly and the world still. Uh, we thank you for the good news on the horizon of vaccines that looks like look like they're coming available, but we know there's still a long road to go. So uh, help us be careful, help us be thoughtful, um, and, and just have mercy, we pray in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, for our country in particular, in this politically uh, uh, char- charged moment, we would just pray for peace. We would pray for wisdom. We would pray for... Uh, the, that the, the people would make the right decisions and the right choices and we could have a peaceful transfer of power. And, um, and Lord, in that process, help us as your people to keep our eyes on you and our hearts attuned to your presence and your purposes. 
And now, Lord, as we take a few moments to look into your word, I pray that you would give us ears to hear, that you'd give us minds to understand, and you would give us hearts that are ready to receive and willing to obey. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, today is Founders Day, and um, it is the day that we uh, take a few moments to think about uh, where we've come from and, and what we, how we got where we are. And I'm talking specifically about this expression of the body of Christ called Central Congregational Church. And uh, just as a little teaser, if you haven't seen the newsletter yet, uh, the article that I wrote um, is, a, is sort of a brief history uh, of this church. And I would encourage you to take a moment to read that and to think about that. And, um, and I want to talk to us this morning from the book of math, uh, Hebrews, excuse me, Chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Very familiar passage. We'll read it in just a moment. Um, And I want to talk to us about the relay race of faith. The relay race of faith. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever been in or remember being in a relay race uh, in your life. Um, uh, I probably was in a running relay race at junior high or high school, something in PE maybe. I don't know. But uh, I also was on swim team in high school, and I'm pretty sure I was in a relay race uh, in that. Uh, but whether you're in it or watching it, uh, relay races are really exciting. In fact, I really enjoy watching the swimming relay races in the Olympics um, because it's not just one person performing well, but it's a group of people uh, that, have to, um, that have to do their part as well as they can do it, and they have to make the, the, the handoff, either the, in a relay race, the handing of the baton, or they have to wait until the person before them touches the wall before the sw- next swimmer can dive in. Um, and then they, and then in between time, everybody else on the team is just cheering uh, their teammate on, cheering them to do the best that they can do and to get to their finish line so they can all get to the finish line and, and just do the best. They're really exciting. And, um, and it's a great example of what our life of faith is in context to the larger uh, body of Christ that has um, gone, that is with us now and that has gone before us, and um, and we're going to look at that today as we uh, look at the great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us, um, and uh, and on Founders Day, as we think about the 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 our sort of our immediate spiritual ancestors here at Central Congregational Church, it's a time for us to remember and give thanks for those who've gone ahead of us, uh, who've gone before us in faith and in faithfulness, and. Uh, also, as we remember, it's a catalyst uh, for us to stay in the race and to finish strong. Um, I'm sure we've all, if, as we continue in this time of pandemic, this time of political struggle, all the other racial tension we've walked through recently, I can imagine that we have all been through times where we're just like, I can't do this anymore. I, I just want to check out. Um, and life comes at us that way sometimes. Maybe even before all this, you were dealing with a physical issue, a relational issue, a financial issue, whatever it might have been. And you just feel like, I can't do this. I don't know where God is in all of this. Um, and uh, I, I just don't feel like I can move forward. And uh, maybe you feel like you're about to drop the baton or you're about to just check out of the, you know, swim to the edge of the pool and say, forget it. Um, but now's the time to look back to thank God for the faith and faithfulness of all those who've gone before us in the Lord and to use their faithfulness and their stories to be an encouragement in our own lives to say, you know what, I can do this and I can, I can move forward. And, um, and then especially to, as the passage we're going to read in a minute, to fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the founder of the church, right? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will uh, not prevail against it. And he is the champion of the race. He's already run it and he's already won it uh, for us. Uh, In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, the Apostle Paul writes, uh, Consequently, speaking to the Gentiles, the non-Jews of his day that were coming to faith, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Um, built built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, built on those that have gone before you, with Christ Jesus as the chief cornerstone or the main foundational stone. In him, the whole building is being joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And so on this Founders Day, we don't just look to our, 
our earthly founders and our earthly forerunners, but we fix our eyes on Jesus. Um, and, and he's the foundation uh, of the church of Jesus Christ. Um, and he is also the champion of the race of faith or the relay race of faith, as I've called it today. In Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, it says, We have this hope, this hope in what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, as an anchor for the soul and uh, firm and secure. It enters into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, remembering the, the Old Testament temple that separated the regular part of the temple from the Holy of Holies. This, this hope we have helps us enter into that Holy of Holies where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. For what, so whatever we're walking through, whatever struggle we might be facing, we have a whole generations of people that have gone before us in faith and faithfulness, and we have a Savior uh, that has already won the race. He's already laid the foundation, and he is with us. But let's look at that a little more specifically uh, in Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verses 1 through 3. Very familiar passage. Let me read it for us right now. The writer of Hebrews says this after, and I would encourage you to go back and read all of Hebrews chapter 11, because he recounts the faithfulness of all of these different people, and we'll read a small passage of part of it a little later in the message. But um, after he gets done with naming all these people, recounting their great deeds of faith, he says, starting at verse 1 of chapter 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, uh, the NLT says crowd of witnesses, um, I sort of like the idea of cloud because it gives the idea of a crowd, but it's also it's a little misty and mysterious and it can incorporate those that have died and gone before us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So let's look at this passage in the context of the relay race of faith. Paul uses race language in this um, uh, not race as in racial tension, but uh, in a foot race, um, about, and it compares the life of faith to a race. And uh, you should have received some notes in the email, and the Uversion notes are available through the Uversion app. And here's the central thought if you're keeping, uh, taking notes uh, today. Our hearts are encouraged, and our energy is renewed in the life of faith when we imagine the cheers and remind ourselves of the faithfulness of those who have gone before us. And we, like they, keep our focus on the pace-setting, finished work of Jesus Christ. Let me read that one more time. It's a little long, and, uh, um, but I think it'll, uh, it sort of encapsulates what we're talking about. Our hearts are encouraged and our energy is renewed in the life of faith when we imagine the cheers and remind ourselves of the faithfulness of those who have gone before us and when we, like they, keep our focus on the pace-setting, finished work of Jesus Christ. It's about looking back so that we have the strength to move forward. And when we're in a relay race, and especially, especially a running race, they use a baton. And it's really, the, that's the crucial time in the race. You know, they've got that little space marked out on the track where you have to get the baton passed in that, that time, that, that area. And then, um, you know, they practice those handoffs over and over and over. Um, and each generation of faith, each generation of followers of Jesus, in, in a sort of a, a metaphorical way, has to pass that baton of faith on. And so, in light of this passage, as we take the baton of faith, there's some things we can understand uh, from this passage. First of all, as we take the baton of faith, we can understand that we are not alone and our experience is not unique. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And I want us to think about that right now. And again, go back and read Hebrews chapter 11. 
Think about the people that have gone before you in faith, people in your family, uh, maybe somebody that led you to the Lord, even people that are still alive today that are that are that cloud and crowd of witnesses that are behind, with you, cheering you on, providing examples, providing encouragement to you. Um, so that if you're tired, if you're frustrated in this time, if you're angry, if you're confused, if you just feel like I'm done, I don't want to do this anymore, can you recognize and can we recognize that not one of us, none of us are alone. We are part of a great movement of God that has been going on, on even before the time of Jesus coming to earth as a human being from the time that God created the world. We are not alone. And then secondly, our experience is not unique. And uh, let me explain that. In one sense, each of our lives and our life experiences are unique. Nobody experience life, experiences life in the exact same way, way we do. Um, and, uh, and we go through some various trials that are unique to us. But they're not unique in the sense that there's been all sorts of people all throughout history that have walked through all sorts of experiences, some of them really horrible. Um, and so uh, one of the temptations, uh, one of the, uh, yeah, one of the ways the devil, the one, way the, the, one of the ways the devil tries to tempt us is to get us to think, well, nobody knows the troubles I've seen, right? Nobody, nobody can relate to me because this is just worse than this. I'm walking through something that's worse than anybody else has walked through or nobody can relate. And I just want to say to you this morning from this passage that you can, can we get our eyes off ourselves? Can we get them on this great cloud of witnesses, this example of faith and faithfulness of the people that have gone before us? So we know we're not alone and we know our experience is not just unique to us. Lots of other people have walked through really hard stuff, pandemics, depressions, wars, diseases, financial collapse, whatever it might be. They've walked through it as followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, whatever happened in their life, they remained faithful and were able to carry on in the race of faith. I want to read a little bit of a, long part, a longer passage from Hebrews chapter 11, at near the end of when he's recounting all these different faithful people, Moses and Abraham and Sarah and others. Starting at verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 11, he says this, and you can sort of feel the pace pick up as he writes. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell, again, tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edges, edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies." Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured. Or now, now he shifts gears. He talks first about those who did great exploits in faith. Now he talks about, about those who endured great suffering in faith. Women, uh, there were others, this is starting in the middle of verse 35, there were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were, um, uh, they were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. Wow, could God give us the strength and the faith to live in such a manner that the world was not worthy of what, how faithful we were? And how, um, they wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet not one of them had received what had been promised. Since God had planned something far better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. In other words, they were all faithful and they didn't even live to the time of seeing Jesus come. And it was only once Jesus came that we all can share in the great work of salvation that God has done. Brothers and sisters, as we think about those that have gone before us and as we continue to navigate this challenging time, don't let the enemy fool us. Don't, let him, don't allow him to get us to cave in ourselves. We're not alone and our experience, though unique to us, is not unique in the history of the world. So uh, we're not alone. And secondly, uh, as, the, as we grab the baton of faith, we can understand that even though we're not alone, we are responsible. We're responsible to remove the obstacles of faith and faithfulness of our own making. 
Um, now, obviously, some, there are some races that are like obstacle courses. They have hurdles and they have things you have to jump over and get around. In fact, that's become a big thing for some folks in our, our society today to go to these races where they pur purposely, they're not just running, but they have to climb walls and go through mud and all sorts of things. Um, and those are obstacles that are put there by others that we, and, and life is full of all sorts of obstacles that we have no control over. But the next part here, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. This is talking about obstacles to faith and faithfulness that we have control over. The things we think about, the behaviors we engage in, the relationships we pursue, how we spend our time and how we spend our money. Um, there's all sorts of things that we do have control of. And there's all sorts of ways that things that we engage in that we don't even realize what a detriment they are to our faith at times. So now would be a good time. If, if you're struggling in this time, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're frustrated, if you're angry or you're just like, I'm just whatever, I'm just done. would be a great time to think about and ask the Lord to help you take some stock in where is your focus of your mind and your attention? What are you, how are you occupying your time? Are you praying? Are you worshiping? Are you trying to reach out as it's appropriate? Or are you just glued to CNN or Fox News or your social media feed? Are you just hanging out with people that are just feeding you negative information? Are you feeding your addictions? And we all have our addictions of some one sort or another. But it says, as we consider this great cloud of witnesses um, and their faithfulness, it should be a catalyst catalyst for us to take stock of our own lives and say, all right, I'm in a race of faith. I'm in a race for my life. I'm in a race for eternity. And I've got a bunch of dead weight on me that's holding me back and ask God to help us get rid of that. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two, we read it a couple weeks ago. I think the apostle Paul says again, therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy. Now he's talking about not just in view of the faithfulness of others, but in view of what God has done for us to offer our very bodies as a living sacrifice and holy and pleasing to God. That is our true and proper worship and to not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. As we think about receiving the baton of faith from those who have gone before us so that we can run our race and, and, and our part of the race and we can finish strong, we have to recognize that we bear responsibility to turn away from the things of the world, away from the things of the flesh, and to offer ourselves fully and finally to the God who created us and to Jesus who saved us and to be daily and regularly filled with his Holy Spirit. So as we take that baton, we need to know we're not alone. We need to know that we're responsible to get ourselves in racing shape. Um, and, uh, and then thirdly, we need to understand that we're in a marathon not a sprint. <laughs> and I think we know this, obviously, just by experience. Um, this is important for me because I've been pretty athletic most of my life. But um, if you know anything about muscles uh, and, and athletic, athletics, um, I, I guess in your muscles, there's sprint fiber and there's, I think, called endurance fiber. Um, and it's, you know, typical that people that are more sprinters and, long, and people that are more long distance runners or swimmers, the very tone of their muscles is different. Well, every part of my being is sprint fiber. <laughs> when I was on swim team in high school, which I was only on so I could play water polo during water polo season, I got really frustrated at the swim meets because I was just a sprinter. I swam the 50 and the 100. And so in a four-hour swim meet, I was in the water for like, like three minutes. <laughs> and then I just got to sit around and cheer everybody else on. Um, but when it comes to the race of faith, the relay race of faith, when it comes to being faithful to God in our lives today, so that we can be about, be faithful to what he's called us to be and do and, to, and, and leaning into what he has for us in eternity, we've got to remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and if we go at it too hard and too hot and too heavy, too fast, we're going to get burnt out. Or if things don't go the way we planned, if we don't feel like God answered some prayers the way we thought he should, uh, we might just wipe our hands and say, well, forget it. But he says in this, since we're surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin so, that so easily tangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It takes patience. It takes perseverance. It takes stick-to-itiveness 
Um, Jesus has not called us to an easy life. Jesus isn't here to pamper us and coddle us and just make us feel good. Jesus has called us to a life of faith and faithfulness. He's called us into the kingdom of God that is in direct opposition to the kingdoms of this world. And until we get to the other side, until he comes to make all things new or we pass away and enter into the rest of our salvation until he comes, um, it's a battle. It's a struggle. It's sort of like Thunderdome. It's a race, but it's a race where people are trying to kill us and throw us off the course. Um, Listen to what the Apostle Paul says uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, another very familiar passage. He's just talking about um, how any, any credit he might get uh, as a faithful person or whatever, he, he just, or anything he's accomplished in life compared to what God's done for him, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and then he says in verse 12, not that I have already obtained all this, all the things that God has called me to, not that he's, he's as faithful as he should be, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Man, that's such a beautiful, uh, vivid passage. Paul says, there's all sorts of things holding me back, and, but I know what the goal is. And I know this is, I've got the baton and it's my time. And I haven't finished the race. I haven't got it all figured out. I've made some mistakes, but I'm not going to, I may have tripped over a hurdle or two. But I'm not going to stop and go, oh man, I can't believe that. I, I shouldn't even run anymore. Who am I? I'm no good. I'll never finish. He says, no, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Uh, I, uh, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Can I just remind us, brothers and sisters, we are in this race for the prize of, of the eternal kingdom of God, of being with God with God uh, and with everyone that's ever called on him, all the faithful th in, into eternity. And it is a prize, it is a goal that is, is greater and more beautiful and wonderful than we can even imagine. And it's worth every ounce of energy, it's worth every drop of blood, it's worth every sleepless night, whatever, it's worth it to stay in it. And we have a whole history of people that have gone before us and have hung in there and, um, and, and we have the baton today, and I just want to encourage myself and encourage you not to give up, to recognize that we're in a marathon and not a sprint. But then, fully, uh, finally, it says, um, uh, let us run, this is uh, part of verse 1 still, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. You know, when you, when you run, when you swim, you need to have a goal in mind. You need to have somewhere to fix your attention. Um, I still swim as a form of exercise. Um, and especially, I do the backstroke a little bit. And it's really easy to start bumping into the lane lines when you do backstroke. And the way that you don't do that is you pick a point to stare at that's in the center of the lane. And usually it's the flags that go across the pool. And you keep your eyes on those flags while you're doing that. And if you do that, you really pretty much go in a straight line. And as soon as you get off of that, and I've done this many times, the next thing you know, your arm is coming down and it's flailing across the lane line and uh, you uh, feel very foolish and you lose all your energy because you sort of got to start swimming again. Um, when the baton gets passed to us, we need to recognize that we have a forerunner in Jesus Christ that has finished the race already and has won the victory. This is, we're not in a race where there's any doubt about how it's going to end. There, we're not in a race where, the, where we have to wring our hands and like, oh my, oh my goodness, who's going to win this? The race has already be, been won. It's just a matter of whether we're going to enter in and run our part of the race um, and, and be faithful in the time that we have. Excuse me just a moment. And, um, and so the writer of Hebrews says, as we're running with perseverance, as we're considering those that have gone before us, what is most important is that we fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, who is both the author and the perfecter of our faith, the beginning and the end. He's already done it all for us. 
And he is with us by his Holy Spirit. We are not alone because there are people that have gone before us. And we're not alone because God himself by his spirit is in us. He says, fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And listen to this. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross. So Jesus had a goal. He, he went to and through the cross because there was something beyond it that he had his eyes fixed on, that he had his heart set on, that made it worth all that suffering. And do you know that what, what that was? That, was? that was first and foremost to be faithful to and accomplish the will of his father. But the will of his father and what was in addition to that was that he was securing the renewed relationship with you and with me. Jesus fixed his eyes on the fact that that, that what he was doing was going to secure our salvation. And it says, for that joy, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And in the final verse, verse 3, so consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. That takes us back to our first point. We're not alone, and our situation's not unique. Um, those that have gone before us have walked through all sorts of crazy things. And Jesus himself, as the, as the forerunner, as the pace setter of our faith, uh, endured more than anybody else spiritually, emotionally, and physically to secure our salvation and to bring us back into right rep, uh, relationship with the God who created us and to defeat all of the powers of death and hell and the grave in this world. He is the forerunner that has finished the race and he has assured our victory and we need to fix our eyes and especially in this time of so much unknowing, so much conflict, so much fear, we need to get our eyes off of all of those things and we need to get them on to Jesus and on to those that have gone before us. Revelation chapter 5 verse 6 through 10 says this about Jesus, uh, the, the writer of Revelation um, seeing uh, that Jesus came and took the scroll from, from, the, from God the Father, the scroll that, was the, that had written out all the outworking of the will of God that nobody could open, nobody was righteous enough to open it. And John's weeping and he's saying, wait, the promises of God have stopped, they're stuck. But then it says, then he says, then I saw a lamb, speaking of Jesus, looking at, at, as if it had been slain. Standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. And they sang a new song, saying, You, speaking to Jesus and of Jesus, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them into a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth. Jesus has gone before us. He has won the race. And so when we, as we take the baton and we remember that we're not alone... We can, we can discipline ourselves and we can say, God, would you help me to get rid of the, the things that are hindering me, the sin in my life that I'm allowing? Um, would you help me to persevere in all of that? Help me to keep my eyes on you so that I can keep going and I can be faithful and I can finish strong. If we have that mindset and if we make prayer and worship uh, and... and uh, um, and service and uh, scripture reading, uh, all of those things, if we make those a part of our life on a regular basis, there's no way we cannot finish strong. There, and there's nothing that we cannot survive. So in the days ahead, when we don't know how this is all going to end, let's consider that great cloud of witnesses. Let's, in our church family, in Central Congregational Church, let's consider uh, the folks that have gone before us, again, some of their names being right here. I can see them as I look around our sanctuary at the bottoms of the stained glass windows. Uh, one of them you'll read about in the newsletter. One family, uh, he was a medical missionary to China, um, and they lived through all sorts of challenging things. So we've been here before as a people of faith. Let's keep the faith and let's keep moving forward. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your example. And we thank you so much for all of those that have gone before us. Help us do our part in our time, in our day, 
Um, forgive us for our faithlessness. Um, help us get over our uh, just the places where we feel like we want to give up. Maybe the places where we've gotten focused on ourselves instead of on you. Um, and um, help us uh, gain new energy, new life, new hope in you. And help us uh, that are alive today to be an encouragement to one another. And we ask all this in the strong and faithful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been good to be together with you this morning as we're back at the church for the first time in a few weeks. And I uh, hope this has been an encouragement to you. Go back, read chapter 11 and 12 together. It will really encourage you and challenge you uh, in your walk with the Lord. And until we see each other again, uh, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Would you sing with us now? Casting my cares aside. So oh.